In another universe, Derek. In another playthrough, in another universe, Derek. Just you wait. Just you wait. Another universe. <laughs> Sup, guys and gals? Dude. Dude, Derek looks so good! Look at him! He's grown so tall! His eyes are gorgeous, too. Running a hand through his hair. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, the person who crossed the lot was unmistakably Derek Suarez. He was beaming the whole way. It's been too long, even though it hasn't actually been that long, but long enough. Derek! Wow, I'm so glad you're here. Oh man, hunk alert. You ran over and hugged him. You grabbed onto his arm excitedly. You waved him in. I'm gonna say, oh man, hunk alert. <laughs> Bashful, Derek scratched the back of his head. Well, it's pretty true, but you don't have to say it. I think I do. Someone better report those guns. Thanks to all your encouragement, Derek went all along with the fun and held his arms up, flexing. Applause broke out among your group and you whistled, causing a red blush to darken his cheeks. Could I also hug him in addition to that? I would have picked hug, but I mean, I just I was like, I had to go for it. I had to go for it. I had to go for it. I missed you. I missed you too, buddy. Now can I hug him? He spoke to you gently. You were thrilled just being there, reunited with him. Derek was a good friend of yours, and he had been for a long time. Hey. He waved at Terry and Miranda pleasantly. Over the years, they all had met several times in passing, simply through being friends with the same people. Sup, big man? Yay, hi, it's great you could come. Cove put himself next to Derek. Happy, he clapped a, f a hand on his friend's shoulder. Hi, thanks for coming. Yeah, see, Co Cove planned this, planned to have Derek here. See, this is why I married him. This is why I married this man. This is why I married this man. We could still go to Kreps. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now that we have everybody here, we can take this to the next level and have Kreps while hanging out with friends instead of just hanging out at this parking lot. Thanks. Of course. Thanks for inviting me. Sheepishly, Cove looked back at you and the others. That's when it clicked in your mind. It wasn't his parents that he was texting, or texting earlier. It was Derek the entire time. You get major brownie points for that, husband. Major brownie points for that. Derek is in town for a few months to help my dad and his dad with some work. He's here for a few months! Sweet, we can hang out with him more. Yep, I'm working on my own business thing too, but I'm still involved with running the scuba shop when it's called for. Very nifty. Nifty. Humming, Derek elbowed Co. So? But hey, we don't have to stand around here for my sake. What's the plan? Kreps. Let's hit the town and get Kreps. Eager to get going, everyone piled into Terry's car. Or not. Nobody wants to listen to the foodie. The rest of the afternoon was spent visiting spots all over Sunset Bird, like Kreps, laughing and reminiscing the whole way. Once it started to get late, Terry brought you and Cove back to the neighborhood. You didn't have to walk after there. You wouldn't have to walk there after all. You didn't get out, out until promises were made to see each other again before your trip ended. Heck yes. Side by side, you and Cove stood in the street and waved at the car as it drove away. Terry tapped the horn for two honks while Miranda stuck her hand out the window to wave back. You caught Derek in the back window, giving you both a wide grin. Sighing, as soon as the car turned around another street, they were finally out of sight. Well, that one was a part. Well, that was one party. Time for another. Ready to go see your moms? I love how Cove is really like become a little bit more of a extrovert, a little bit more, a social introvert, a very social introvert. Always, let's keep the celebration going. Just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you're antisocial. Those do not necessarily mean the same thing. Many, some introverts are antisocial, some. But just because you're an introvert does not mean you ought to be, does not at all mean that you're antisocial. You shimmied a bit right there in the street for added emphasis. He looked at you amusedly and rolled his eyes. Come on. Come on, let's go. Spirits high, you and Cove crossed the distance to your house. It was almost time for the anniversary dinner. You'd barely stepped over the threshold and the condo before Ma descended, eagerly welcoming you both. The usual greetings are followed by questions on everyone's well-being, after which the conversation moved on to excited chatter about tonight's dinner plans. Cove excused himself to the restroom to freshen up before being on the move again. But when he returned, wow. <laughs> I love the, the bird pattern on this thing. And good lord, could, do you have abs on your pecs? 
this boy has abs on his pecs, or does his ab, does his like 12, 20 pack, 24 pack go all the way up to his chest? Good, good gravy, Cove. But when in return, you were shocked to see he had entirely changed outfits. Where did that come from? I packed it with me so I could get dressed before the dinner without having to go back to the hotel. Didn't you? Or maybe you have stuff still here at your mom's place. Uh, no, Cove, I didn't do that. Huh. But your, but your mom's party, it's at the country club. And that's also where Liz took golf lessons. Not everyone is there in their Sunday best. This isn't like those summer soirees where they were having a real party. We're only going for a regular meal. I would have still, I don't know, I disagree. I would have still brought something nice to wear. It's my parents' like anniversary. I would have, I would have brought something nice to wear. Come on, game. Give me some options here. You are so good at that normally. Cove was, Cove was as befuddled by your explanation as you were with his actions. He threw his arms up, desperate for understanding. Seriously? How can you not dress nicely for a country club? Yeah, this is very not, not characteristic of me. I don't think the Cypress is as special as you decided it is. You saw Ma, she was in formal clothes, and she's one of the guests of honor. You realize now that with, whenever you went to the country club on a normal day, it was family time with just you, Liz, and your moms. Each time Cove came, there had been more exciting things going on. You never would have thought of that before, but his perspective suddenly made a lot more sense. His frown wobbled and his cheeks became far pinker. He looked down at his own self regrettably as he pulled out at the cuffs ends of his shirt. I don't want him I don't want him to change. Look what you did! I'm surprised that the game has been railroading us through this scene. I'm surprised. Very surprised. Like I would not have said those things. He looks wonderful. Uh, if, if, if my boyfriend or husband or spouse went through all that trouble to look good, I would not be like, oh, why are you wearing that? I, why would I do that? I'd be, I'd be like, dang, you look nice. You look really nice. I think I should change. Like, I don't care if we're going to the gas station. I'd be like, if that's how nice you look, I probably should change too. He seemed more like a scolded child than a grown man dressed for the latest charity gala. I thought she was gonna get changed while you and me were... Ma? No way, she'd need a whole more, lot more time than that. Well, it's okay, you look very nice. You are such a cutie. I love how much of an idiot you are. You shrug, no comment needed. You pat his arm encouragingly. You are such a cutie. Cove could only sigh, fully embarrassed. Cove's eyes stole a glance at the hall, as if he was calculating if he'd have another time for another quick change. I don't want him to change. He looks great. Unfortunately for him, it was not meant to be. No, no, keep him in this outfit. Or later tonight, we'll take him out of his outfit. Don't, don't take that outfit until later tonight. There you go. The time you head out came far quicker than you'd expected. Cliff and Kyra swung by the condo to make sure everything was in order. And for your second surprise that night, Cliff was also in former clothes, formal clothes. Cove's face excitedly whipped, ac whipped towards yours at the same time Cliff went to Kyra's. The two men pointed at one another. See? He knows. <laughs> exactly, sport. Kyra was talking to me like I was crazy. The aforementioned Kyra placed a hand delicately yet dramatically across her eyes. Placed a hand delicately yet dramatically across her eyes. Clifford, our son only knows, only knows this because you are the one who raised him. Cliff chuckled, his arm moving to scratch at the back of his neck. Yep, that's my boy. The end of Cove's mouth gently bent up. He truly was his father's kid, in more ways than he even realized. They may be the only ones in the group, potentially only guests at the entire club all gussied up, but at least they could now take solace in one another. That looked to be good enough for them. All the members of your family headed out at the same time to the Cypress. It was to be, it ha it was to be a perfect reunion. An impeccably smart host greeted you on arrival smoothly leading the way to, to the set of tables reserved for your group. Once you'd all settled in, chosen drinks were poured into delicate glasses. The food could be coming out later, letting you soak up the atmosphere for a little longer. Smiling, your parents faced the group of familiar faces, all gathered here together to share their special day with them. Mom reached over and took Ma's hand, clasping it between both of hers. Thanks! Thanks for being here tonight, gang. Marrying this lady right here is the best thing I've ever done, and there's no one else I'd want to celebrate that with. Yes, we're so lucky. Not only do we have each other, but we've got such a large and loving family through all of you. Around you, you heard people saying aww and chuckling appreciatively at the comment. Lee had clapped her hands tightly in front of her, her eyes shining. Your eyes met Liz's misty ones and the affection she had for her moms carried over to you too. 
You returned your attention towards the happy couple as they just leaned in to kiss, smiling all the while. The table responded with cheers and clapping, shouts of happy anniversary and other congratulations continuing even after they'd broken apart. Mom beamed as she watched Ma giggle dreamily. The waiters reappeared, delivering delicious plates of food, and the dinner began in earnest. Both conversation and laughter continued to flow freely as the night went on, with the two families relishing the opportunity to be together once more. Eventually, after your hunger and thirst had been fully satisfied, the plates were cleared and the event began to draw to a close. Cliff and Kyra exchanged goodbyes with your family before heading out together. Cove gave his goodbyes to his parents while hanging back until your moms are ready to head off. You were getting a lift back with your moms. It was already late, so you discussed the possibility of going straight to the hotel rather than going back to the condo, but Cove had asked if they'd mind taking him back to the neighborhood. He'd wanted to visit it a little, it a little longer. Your mom had happily agreed. Liz and Lee were feeling tired, so your mom swung by their hotels during the trip home while you and Cove made the full journey with them. Riding in the backseat of your mom's car with Cove felt more than a little nostalgic. As your eyes drifted over to him, his head resting on the window, it was hard to believe how much time had passed. Mom stretched, it, stretched as she got out of the car, smiling over her shoulder as she headed towards the house. Time to put my feet up. You two joining us? Cove shook his head. No thanks, it's your anniversary. You don't have to entertain me. I'll take a walk. It's never any trouble to have you over, Cove. You all right with that? Let him do as he pleases, Lonnie. But you better not stay out too much later or I'll be, or there'll be trouble. Ma chuckled as mom wag wag waggled a finger, her expression exaggeratedly severe as she reprised a role that, in truth, she never really played. Neither of your parents had been practically harsh as you'd grown up. Ma joined in the act. Don't go too wild just because there's no school tomorrow. Laughing, they made their way inside, leaving you standing on the dark street of Cove. You didn't even need to ask him why. You already had the answer for this. He wasn't yet ready for the day to end. So we're gonna go to that field with the fireflies. Predictable, but still romantic. Without a word, Cove began to stroll down the road. You walked alongside him. You'd known your destination long before you arrived on the dark and utterly deserted beach. There were no lights down here. Nothing but the moon and the stars for illumination. I mean, the beach was my second guess. The only sounds were the gentle waves rolling in and out and the soft sound of the footprints you left in the sand. In other words, it was perfect. Cove stepped out into the waves without a word. He looked up at the sky with a smile and then tucked his head down and began to pull his fancy shirt off. All right. Out alone at night in the beach with my hunky 24 pack up his pecs like husband, pate time. Oh, snap. He does have pecs. He does have abs on his pecs. Look at that. He does have abs on his pecs. Good gravy. He tucked it over his head and lobbed it backwards, further up the beach and out of the reach of the waves. There is definitely something very visually appealing to me about a gentleman, a good-looking gentleman who is, you know, dressed up in slacks and a nice buttoned-up shirt and then removing said shirt still in his nice slacks. There's just something about that that is just very visually appealing to me. Specifically. What are you doing? Didn't know I'd be getting a show. Wait for me! You looked away, look, you looked away embarrassed. You followed him to the water. You better not get any deeper into the water. Didn't know I would be getting a show. Ko froze, his arms still raised from when he'd thrown his shirt. Slowly he came back to life, stiffly pulling his arm back down. Your commentary had made him self-conscious. Dude, look at you. I understand, I get it. No matter how good looking you can be, many people are still self-conscious. No matter how... This, I guess like I said, he's got abs in his pecs and he's still self-conscious. But, but... You shouldn't be, Cove. You look great. Laughing, you clapped your hands in delight as, at his awkwardness. Cove slipped his dress pants off and tossed them back in roughly the same direction as his shirt. He was down to just his polka, bo polka dot boxer briefs. Oh, he looks good in that too. Sometimes you were really struck by the ways in which he was braver than his younger self. This was definitely one of those times. He never ever would have done this when you were both living on this street, but you also knew he still wouldn't do it with anyone other than someone he spent all those years with. You took off your shirt so that you could swim. You decided you didn't care if your clothes got wet. You thought it was so wild that Cove was going to actually swim right now. Yeah, have fun. I'm staying away from the water. Cove waded further to the water until it came up to his chest. 
You marveled as Cove turned around in the water, his exposed shoulders glistening under the moonlight from where the waves had splashed around him. Cove grinned and waved at you from the sea. You're gonna be in so much trouble with my moms when we get back. Cove shrugged. He was enjoying this too much right now to care. I guess. Yeah? Oh well. Think fast. He splashed water at you as soon as the words had left his lips, giving you no time to repair. You managed to turn just enough. You managed to turn just enough that your back took the brunt of the onslaught, but you were still wet now. You kicked water back at him from the shore. You ran away. You're a child. You got in the water to seek vengeance. Cove, I didn't want to get wet. I wouldn't. Yeah, I didn't want to get wet. Cove swam closer, frowning. Sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. You can use my clothes to dry off. I don't mind. There's just. I don't like. Wet clothes. That's the thing. I don't like wet clothes, and I don't like having to remove such wet clothes. It's just not no no bueno for me. I so it's one of those things where like I get it. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil his fun. I don't want to mess with Cove's fun, but but it's just one of those things where I have to. I want to communicate. If it's something that I really don't like, I have to. I can't just keep it to myself. I have to communicate it with my spouse or my spouse or my boyfriend. Um, and we can discuss it and negotiate if we need to negotiate. Because um, that's what a relationship, a successful relationship does, is open communication and lots of negotiation. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. You can use my clothes to dry off. I don't mind. Thanks. He could be difficult sometimes, but you couldn't stay mad at him for long. Yeah, that's true. Cove sighed, then looked at you mournfully. The sudden shift in mood alarmed you, but those worries disappeared as soon as you opened his mouth. I'm still not a merman. The world is cruel. You snickered. After a moment, Cove's mock sadness broke, and he joined in. The two of you wound up drifting further along the, down along the shoreline, chatting and enjoying the chance to be back on the beach that had provided the backdrop for so much of your childhood. Eventually, a silhouette of structures appeared up ahead. As you drew closer, you realized it was the old playground. Cove spotted it too and hurried towards it, dragging himself out of the water and heading into the park. Wet sand coated his feet and lower legs with every step, clinging thickly enough that it began to resemble a bizarre pair of boots. As you followed him, you wondered how many visitors this little park got these days. There were officially no children living in that neighborhood now. Cove gazed at his surroundings in wide-eyed awe. He didn't care at all that he was soaking wet and dressed only in his underwear. Crouching, he gently pushed out, pushed one of his child-sized swing seats, marveling at it all. Wow. I can't believe how tiny everything is. Were we seriously small enough to use these? He shook his head, unable to fathom just how little you'd both been when you first met, then walked over to the monkey bars. Once, these had been a challenge for you. Now they were a little more than waist, high, waist height next to Cove. Cove turned his back to the bars and hopped up onto them with ease, sitting on them comfortably. You sat on the bars with him. You leaned against the bars. You stood in front of him. I, I didn't go with him into the water. I'll go up on the bars with him. Compromise. It was a strange seeing adult cove juxtaposed with a baby with a baby playground, but you took your own pace on this place of the structure. This place had been something so exciting to Cove back when he first arrived, and apparently it was to this day. Cove smiled eagerly as you approached, kicking his feet in the air happily, briefly forgetting the low vantage point until the tip of his toes scraped along the ground. He continued to swing his feet, but with a little more care. You thought it was adorable. In this moment, you were home. It would just so happen to be the place you'd grown up, but really, anywhere you could be with Cove was that for you. Ain't that the truth? He had held a special place in your heart for so long, and so much of your life had been shared. You'd grown up in the same street, which had given you some common ground, but went far beyond that. You had both chosen, from a young age, to share your life with each other. You wouldn't have it any other way. Here we are again. Here we are. Your mood, the mood had shifted now. The funny, impulsive night beach trip with the spike of adrenaline that came from you playing in the water under the moonlight. I did not play under the water. <laughs> Cove forced the issue on me when he splashed me. Had settled into something quieter and more nostalgic. Cove leaned back, tilting his head towards the sky to, to admire the stars above. Too bad I wasn't able to bring my surfboard along for this. Hmm. Cove shrugged dramatically, trying to lift the boot a little. The dinner was really nice. It was great to do all this. He, the smile he had when he spoke these or those words fell as quickly as it appeared. <sighs> it went by so fast. We all came out here for the party and it's over. Liz, Lee, 
our our parents, Derek, Derek, we'll all be going back to our own things now. But what else can you do except say it's okay? And I guess it's part of growing up. This place and these people, they're our foundation. It shaped who we are now, like making castles out of sand. I owe a lot to Sunset Bird. How intuitive you're being right now, Cove. In your underwear, too, and that just makes it even more sexy. An intuitive man in nothing but their underwear. He's crazy sexy. His eyes crinkled fondly, and Cove's voice was gentle when he spoke again. We had a good childhood, I think. I think so, too. We were really lucky. I'll always remember our days here. Wow, you're sounding so old now, you joke. You simply shrugged. You suddenly nodded. We're really lucky. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He shook his head, sighing heavily. All right. His smile took on an uncharacteristically harsh twist. You had a feeling where this was going. We better get home before your dumb parents don't know any who don't know anything get mad. You had to laugh at the half-hearted impression of young Jeremy, the boy you met in this, in this very park. Oh, Jeremy, I thought I'd forgotten all about him. He chuckled along with you for a moment before tapering off. I hope we don't get grounded. The jokes kept coming. It was very amusing to imagine that not only could your mom somehow ground you as a fully grown and independent adult, but that their powers extended over Cove as well. As much as you were enjoying being back here, Cove was right. You had to accept that you needed to go now. It was late, and your moms were still expecting to see you before you got a ride back to the hotel. You and Cove hopped down from the bars, landing easily at the ground, only a, sh only a short distance below. Before you could return, you had some clothes to retrieve from the beach. You retrod the same path, following the footprints down to the shore you'd left in the sand only a little while earlier. Once Cove had scrounged up his abandoned clothes, you started to walk up the old path home, side by side. Drop the <laughs> You're still in your underwear, Cove? Droplets of water slipped down from Cove and fell onto the road as you made your way back to your mom's house. As he was still soaked and sandy from your earlier adventure, it was unlikely, it was likely that Cove was leaving quite a trail in his wake. But you'd see Cove's bedroom growing up. It was only natural for him. The air was slightly humid, already pleasantly dense with moisture that felt like a hug as it closed around you. Any damp footsteps that were left behind would take longer to dry in this weather. The signs of your adventure might even be visible when the sun came up the next day. You hoped so. You quite liked the idea of you and Cove leaving your mark in your hometown again. Even if for a little while. Only if even if only for a little while. Despite being out late and, in Cove's case, mostly undressed, I don't mind, the balmy summer might the balmy summer night prevented you from feeling any chill. You were entirely comfortable. In truth, you felt warm inside and out. The day had been so lovely, spending time with friends and family, and your eyes drifted over to Cove. Cove, your spouse, just seeing him brought a smile to your face, in his underwear. I love you. I always want to be with you. Cove, you make me so happy. You're truly on my other half. You said nothing simply enjoying his presence. I love you. Cove turned to you, his eyes wide and adoring, and he bit his lip as he smiled shyly. You could tell that your words had touched him. I feel the same way. Exactly. He held your gaze a moment longer, looking straight at you as he spoke again. I love you. I love you forever. You enveloped him in a hug. You playfully bumped against him with your side. You kissed him. You reached for his hand. You nodded, pleased with how tonight had played out. You kissed him. Catching him by the hand, you stopped Cove in his tracks and pulled him close. Your heart somersaulted as your lips melt. As your lips met. At this moment, with the quiet seaside town at rest, it felt like it was just the two of you in the world. Cove returned the kiss, gently cradling your head with his hand until you broke apart. You were full of joy. All other concerns and the day-to-the-day -day stresses of normal life were squeezed out by it. All you could think all you could think in that moment was how your life was wonderful. Every second and every day needed to end sometime. And that time had nearly come for tonight. You had to get at least some rest and bring it all to a close. And so, the two of you went inside to say goodnight to your moms, as well as clean yourselves up as best as you could. Your moms, both in pajamas, ready, ready for their own sleep, hooted with laughter as you came inside, disheveled and damp, and their teasing, and their teasing continued until the car came to get you into the hotel. Cove stayed silent as he put his casual clothes on again, placing the formal ones back in the bag he brought with them. They brought them in. You'd given Mom and Ma plenty of material for a mock scolding, and you got a playful lecture about not staying out so late in the future. You just grinned at your partner in crime, feeling like a naughty kid again. Oh, I'm sure it'll get really plenty naughty later on, especially at the hotel. It had been worth it. By the time you and Cove finally dragged yourselves to your hotel room for the night, the sky had been dark for some time, and the lonely hotel hallways were quiet. 
The late hour made you feel a sense of fulfillment. You really were making the most of your trip. It was such an odd thought that this was almost over. You had settled to this new routine naturally. All the familiar streets and faces made everything easy to get used to. The two of you drowsily shuffled past the nice machine and into your room. Kof set his phone on his bedside table and you followed suit. You both started settling in for the night. The hotel room was a welcome sight for your long, after your long day. You notice Cove rub the back of his neck and, and yawn. His voice was quiet and distant. Mm. I hope the pet sitter is doing good. I hope the pet sitter is doing well, even. The wish wasn't exactly directed to you. It was just a sleepy thought that Cove had unleashed upon the world at large. But you still agreed. I hope so, too. Cove still kept fish. Cove still kept fish after all these years. Delightful, colorful things in huge aquariums. He spent a lot of time when he wanted to relax just watching them swim. You also had adopted a pet, who you loved dearly. Your home was a lovely place full of critters that both of you cared for. That was why, with both of you gone, it had been important to find a decent pet sitter. Cove's anxiety about leaving them hadn't subsided. Over the vacation, you had caught him a few times texting the, texting the pet sitter and asking about his fish. I am also a little worried. It'll be okay. You're even more tense than Cove. It'll be okay. Cove turned his head to you, the nervousness still coming off despite his exhaustion. I know what you mean, but you chose that person for a reason. You trust them. But they're all fine. They just miss you. Cove smiled, appreciative of your comfort. You nodded in satisfaction. Mission accomplished. Cove yawned widely. He seemed confused at the magnitude of it. He groggily blinked at you. I think it's time for bed. You glanced at your watch. It really was astonishingly late. Yeah, Cove, that is an understatement. The two of you got changed and brushed your teeth. In no time at all, both of you were cozy and ready to sleep. After that, you flopped onto your side of the shared bed. Cove headed over to, to his side and you felt the mattress dip under his weight. You tucked yourself under the covers and Cove snuggled in closer to the middle. You turned on your side to face him and scooted slightly closer. Your nose is almost touched and Cove watched you with a soft expression on his face. Cove gently spoke, his words like a lullaby. Good night. Good night, Hark. Night. Cove's eyes fluttered shut and let out a contented sigh. There was a warmth from Cove's body next to you. He was right there. His presence was comforting, perfect for lulling you to sleep. His presence was alluring. You really wanted your hands on him. You drifted over, your hand drifted over to Cove's and you ran your fingers up his arm, across his shoulder, and finally to his face. Cove trembled at the gesture. You cradled his cheek and his eyes opened slightly to peek at you, unsure. Are you tired? As nice it was to be near him, you understood he might not be in the mood. You wouldn't mind if you both just went to sleep instead. Cove mumbled into the, home, into the hotel blanket. I, I mean, mean... Not anymore. Wow, chicka brow brow. Your eyebrows lift, eyebrows lifted. He flushed as a growing excitement replaced any previously held plans to rest. You leaned forward and lightly kissed his lips. He pecked you back affectionately. You could feel his smile and his affection. He rolled slightly to that to that he was fully on his he rolled slightly so that he was fully on his side and had a better range of motion. With the new freedom of his arm, he reached over to stroke the back of your head. When the first kiss ended, you immediately started another, and then another. Cove stopped running his fingers down your hair to hold on your to hold your head closer. You broke apart satisfied. Oh, we're this is the last part. We're gone. Go big or go home. You kissed him deeply, you grabbed onto his shirt, you hooked your legs around him, you kissed on his neck, you grabbed his butt, you nibbled his ear, you pressed his forehead together affectionately, you grabbed onto his shirt. You tugged and pulled at Cove's soft pajamas, it stretched under your fingers. Cove started to run a hand through your hair again, sweetly cray carding through the strands. It was a never-ending reassurance that he was here and he cared about you. You kissed him deeply. You snaked your arms around Cove and pulled him as close to you as you could. You savored the heat of his body against you. You pressed into Cove as long as you could manage before needing air. He responded just as desperately. You kissed down his necks. You bent over Cove. That the covers, wow, you bent over Cove, woo. The, whew, the covers wrapping around you and kissed all the way across the side of his neck. Cove squirmed under your touch and made a new pleased noise with every touch. You, um, you hooked your arm, your legs around him. You t look at his expression. Good gravy. You tangled your legs across Cove. You needed to get even closer. He twisted his arms around your back and kissed the corner of your mouth. Um, you nibbled on his ear. 
You pressed your chest against his and toyed with his earlobe, peppering it with soft little bites. Cove spoke, breathed breathly, inaudible words against the crook of your neck. 